on audio. <laughs> All right, what's up, guys? We're here with another episode of Bizmatic, and today I got my special guest. This guy keeps me looking fresh every couple weeks. Mr. T, the barber himself, bro. What's up with you, bro? Welcome to the podcast, dude. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. So, as you know, um, as we were talking earlier, Bizmatic, it's all about the entrepreneur spirit. Um, I like to feature guests who are doing things at a high level in their own business, and you are doing some some big things, bro, with the barber game. So I thought you were going to be a perfect guest to bring on here, bro, just to talk about uh, just the whole barber culture and, and what you've been doing in your story, man. So... Uh, why don't you tell us first a little bit how you got into the barber game, man? Um, originally, barbering was something that I never wanted to do. Um, my dad was a barber. My mom was a hairstylist. So it just was so repetitive because that's what I was around every day my whole childhood life. From By the time I started kindergarten, my parents had their own salon. Okay. So kindergarten all the way to ninth grade. Yeah. Um, kindergarten all the way to eighth grade, my parents had the same business. Um, and then they split, and then my dad opened his own barbershop, and my mom opened her own salon. Oh, okay. So it's just something that I've been around my whole life, bro. And you Was know, that the same city? or Same city. Actually, uh, I used to get mad at my mom, or get mad at my dad, and leave and walk ar around the corner to my dad's shop, or from... My dad shot, he would piss me off and walk around to my mom. To your mom's salon, bro. <laughs> yeah. And you grew up in Florida, right? What part of Florida? Um, Central Florida. Yeah. Um, a place called Haines City, which is close to Orlando. Yeah. It's a, a very small area. Yeah. Um, I think the whole entire city's population is like 40,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the county, I think it might be 100,000. Wow. In the whole entire county. Yeah. So, and um, how long were, I guess, were you... Were you in the barber game out there before you moved out here? So I started barbering in in Florida in 2007 is when I graduated barber school. Mm -hmm. um, from 2007 to 2016. So how many years is that? What is that, nine, nine years or so? Yeah, about nine years I was there. And then um, I kind of hit the cap. I hit the ceiling. And uh, I've been here now for two and a half years. December 1st, I think it'll be three years. Here in the Bay Area. In the Bay. And when you were growing up, man, within the, in the barber shop with, with your parents, I guess, what do you remember the most as a kid about just being in the shop, man? Being in the shop, um, that's where I got my game from, bro. Uh, and, and being that my parents are in the same building, yeah. Um, you could get game from the women. You learn some things what women talk about. Yeah. And then the guys, you know, you learn some things from what you know, guys do or what guys talk about. Yeah. So you got your both of your parents. One's a hairstylist, one's a barber, um, and they're both counselors too at the same time. Because you know that that's everybody's time when they sit down. Not only do they want to get up looking good. Yeah. You know, it's a it's it's kind of like an eternal um, feeling also that they get. You know what you guys talk about. You know. Um, Sometimes you have to coach them through situations. Yeah. So I learned some things that I heard my parents talk about some things that we never discussed, that they discussed with their clients too. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was able to, to to be up on game in an early age, bro. Yeah. Learned a lot of stuff at a young age. And that's true, man, because you're, you're sitting with someone for 30, 40 minutes, sometimes even more, right? So, but imagine it, a, whim, a woman. Yeah. I'll that's two so. hours or better. Yeah. You know, and they talking about it. Just, they dudes cheating on them, <laughs> <laughs> or or what they trying to do? They planning an escape route, or they tired of their man, man. You, I've heard some some crazy stuff, man, on both spectrums though, for yeah. women and men. So, and that's funny, man, because when I go in the barber shop, like I I started going to more of the urban barber <laughs> since like eighth grade, bro, because I've always had curly hair. And like I try to go to other places, they couldn't cut my hair right. So I started going to uh, Style Masters over there uh, on the south side. Uh -huh. People know who they are. And uh, when you walk in, man, it's, it's just a whole different culture in there, man. Like people cracking jokes, you know, getting on each other. It's, just, it's, just, it's just it's uncensored, man. It's yeah. raw in there, yeah. man. And 
and it's it's like you go in there, you just it's like everyone like you're with, you're with your homies, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's a big, it, it's just a big man cave, bro. The barbershop is a huge man cave. Yeah. And I tell everybody that, um, even from when the kids come in, which we don't get a, a lot of kids here. Yeah. But back when I was in Florida, um, towards the end of me being there, I used to cut a lot of kids, and uh, that's when I was working in my mom's shop towards the last, I think, four years that I was there. Yeah. So it was kind of more sensitive versus being when I when I worked in my dad's barbershop. Yeah. Until um, it closed. Well, he didn't close the shop. The city bought the building. Oh, so they were it. building City Hall, and uh, we decided to merge. At that point, we merged with a clothing store. Mm. So we were there all the way until um, my dad said he was retiring. He was done. And then um, from there, I just went back and... Me and my mom was working and doing our own thing. Got it, got it. And I guess, you know, what what I like a lot about a lot of the barbers that I've seen is that they're entrepreneurs, man. They're they're hustling. Like they're doing other things other than barbering. Bro, that's that's <laughs> kinda I mean, it's kinda just like a barber's instinct. Yeah. You know, um you can you can tell like I work with fifteen people now. Yeah. So everybody's different. But you yeah. can you can come in the shop and I know you can come in and sit and see who's really hustling or who's about their business versus the ones who are kind of just skating through, you know, just doing enough to barely get by. Yeah. But as a barber, if you want to be on top of the game or you want to be somebody who's in the industry, there's no time for, for you to just lay back and relax. Yeah. If I'm not cutting in the shot, which nine times out of ten, and you know that when I come through, I'm always five or ten minutes late, but because yeah. of the schedule, is just crazy. So, but if I do have downtime, I'm trying to edit a video, or I'm on a conference call, or I'm just making sure I'm doing things to stay elevating myself. Yeah. You know, and that's how you get ahead. Um, I tell my cousin, my cousin just moved in. Yeah. Uh, and I'm telling him, bro, when you're not cutting, you need to find ways to, one, market yourself. Mm -hmm. Two, watch somebody shadow and learn so you can get better at your craft. Yeah. That's what's going to put you ahead of everybody else because you don't have to be the best barber to make it in the industry. I know famous barbers who are on magazine covers every month. Yeah. There's women who are dominating the barber industry and that they're not quote unquote the best barber. Most technical, right? They're not the best barber in the game. Yeah. They just market themselves better than anybody. Yeah. And how much how much how important do you think is the marketing aspect? Versus the skill, like what I feel like, once you get to a certain level of barbering, as long as you're like at a standard, right? Like, right, right. Um, no one's gonna really know like how good your haircut, unless you're in the industry, right? Exactly. The average person may not know like, oh, he cuts better. Than right. This guy, you right? don't know. Uh, the average person wouldn't know until that. That's the experience that they get, or if they're in the barbershop regularly, or in a you know a upscale or urban type of setting. Yeah. If you're going to get that ten dollar haircut you know, every week, everything you see in that shop, nine times out of 10 is gonna be bad. Yeah. So you're accustomed to that and that's what you see, <laughs> yeah. you know? If you're in the type of shop that like we are, yeah. and you know, you seeing these multiple bars putting out good work, yeah. then that's what you're gonna expect, yeah. you know? Um, I let's, feel- I, Let's talk about that though, like how, you're considered a what, master barber? Yes. What, is that, what does that mean? Master barber means many things. First thing, um, you're able to master, you're able to, to create any style that comes through the door. Mm. How much experience do you have? Do you know all the technical terms of barbering? Yeah. If someone comes in and don't, doesn't know exactly what they want, can you coach them through that? Yeah. Can you tell them what they want when, you don't, when they don't even know what they want? Yeah. So um, I think the skill level and the experience is majority of what a, a master barber means yeah. for most part. Um, and then from there, it just it just multiple multiple things. And and tell me a little bit more about like how you practice coming up. Like, there's one thing of going to barber school, right? But were you cutting hair before you went to barber school? Like, practicing I, like on people? Or I never took barbering serious, bro. Because like I said, it was just like imagine if your parents were uh, dog breeders, yeah, right, and you're around puppies all the time. Yeah, yeah. So you never look at it like, hey, uh, I could really make some money off of this. I could really make a, a, a great living doing this. This yeah. is my my parents are doing. It's second nature to you. Yeah. So you see the dogs, you're around it, you know everything it is about the dogs, yeah. but it's just not you. Got it. So I felt like barbering was not me. Yeah. I tried everything 
under the sun. <laughs> Barber was my last resort. Wow. So um, I started, my first job was at a little burger joint called Juicy Lucy. I knew that when I was 14 years old, this is uh, ninth grade. Yeah. I'm like, man, I want to, I like fly stuff. I need money. I need a job. So I had, a, this is the only place in town that will hire you at 14. Yeah. So I went and talked to the people and they was like, okay, look, um, you got to go to your goddess counselor. You got to get a work waiver to work here. Yeah, yeah. I went through all the extra stuff, bro, just to get these little 10, 12 hours a week. You know, I'm thinking I'm making $100 a week, a part-time, 150 bucks. Yeah. I could buy shoes and clothes and I'm cool. Yeah. But it didn't last too long. So from there, um, I worked at a call center, all the fast food, McDonald's, uh, Burger King. I did all that Taco Bell. So when did the light when did like the light bulb go off? Like maybe the, I should start taking this barber thing serious. Okay. Um, fast forward, right? Yeah. I'm twenty years old now. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, all my friends are going off in college. I tried that, it didn't work for me. So I got a couple of friends who's doing well in college, you know, getting ready to kinda get out or at least already got their two year degree by now. Yeah. So I found a job as a, a electrician apprentice. Mm. So at that time, I think they was paying about 12 bucks an hour. Yeah. And that was in 2006, yeah. 2005. And that was in Florida. So that was great. Back For me, then, that yeah. was that was amazing. I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm bringing home 400 bucks a week. It don't get much better than that, right? Balling, right? <laughs> so from there, um, I actually got hurt. Um, I was wiring the house and um, something happened. I slipped on the ladder. It was a nail hanging out of a truss. Oh. Slipped in my arm. Okay, what do they do? Immediately before they stitch me up, yeah. they want to give me an on site drug test. I'm bleeding, bro. Like, I feel <laughs> like I'm about to faint. They want to drug test me before I can even go to the hospital. Yeah. So I'm like, man, these people don't treat you good. Yeah. You know, I go to uh, the clinic, they stitch me up. But now I'm on, I'm on uh, workers' comp. So now I'm out of work for like three months. Yeah. And I'm getting paid not much money, but at this time is where I've, I've realized that this is not for me. Yeah. It's too hot. You know, I done tried everything else that I possibly could. Yeah. Um, doing a little sneaky stuff here and there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, man, I was hanging out with my pops at this time a lot. Yeah. I got free time. My dad is funny, cool, just a, just a funny, funny ass dude. So I'm in the shop every single day and I'm just seeing all these people come in and out. Yeah. In and out. I'm watching him. He's buying cars. He's fly. He's doing all this good stuff that I want. Yeah. So I'm like, man, you know what, man? I'm like, man, fuck it. I'm gonna go to barber school. Yeah. So when I say I'm gonna go to barber school, it's like, I'm really just saying that yeah. to get my parents off my ass because they like, well, you got to do something. You got to do something. You're not yeah. going to school. You can't just stay here. Yeah. They push me at this point. So I'm knowing in my brain, like, Okay, I'm gonna go to barber school. Start sweeping. This, or something, this is right? gonna make them happy. I've done all the sweeping. I've done all this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I used to spend my summers in Atlanta, I used to cut my cousin's hair that uh, on my mom's side, but I would murder their shit. They thought it was the greatest thing ever. Though. <laughs> so I always had the confidence. Yeah, yeah. Right, but it's just like I wanted to prove to my parents that I could do something that y'all didn't do and still be successful. Yeah. But for me, it just didn't work. So. Uh, I hit. I enrolled in uh, cosmetology school actually, yeah. and then at that point it was like, I don't want to be here, but you know I'm just doing this to keep my parents out of my ass. Yeah. Right. And then it got interesting. Then I realized I was good, and I was like, man, okay, I'm gonna just push through it and see where we go. Yeah. And you fast forward 12, 13 years later, man. That's where we at. So it sounds like circumstances, right? It was, it's almost like fate or destiny, man. Like fate you, or destiny, you went bro. all these different ways and somehow ended back up to where your roots were at, man. Yeah. Like bar the barbering and the hair game was like already ingrained in you, right? Yeah. Just from just being my, exposed. My grandma, to you. Um, my grandma, she did hair. My aunt, she did hair. Yeah. Um, my aunt, my dad, and my mom was in the same shop for eight, nine years straight. Yeah. My sister went to nail school. She did nails for a little bit, but she didn't finish. Yeah. I mean, she she just stopped and, and went and got like a nine to five or so when she moved to Georgia. Yeah. So it was like a real deal family thing. Yeah. And I just didn't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. yeah. So I uh, fast forward now to now having some some success. Are you glad you made that move? Man, <laughs> it's the best thing ever because I still got the freedom. Yeah. You know, um, the freedom is limited, but I still do what I want. 
yeah. you know, to a certain point, and I make my own schedule. So, you know, um, being able to make money and be able to still somewhat do what you want and not be kind of controlled by, okay, uh, you have to work this many hours a week. Yeah. You have to work these days in this location. If you don't, then your income's cut or you're yeah. fired. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it works for me and my lifestyle. And don't get twisted. You work a lot, bro. Right? Like, you, you're talking yeah. about freedom, but you actually, you put in the 60, hours. 60, 70 I see hours you, a week, I bro. see you all the time on, on you know, and Instagram and all that. You working all the time. Bro, it's like right now, it's almost like I got two full-time jobs. Yeah. So I'm working in the shop full-time. Yeah. And I'm dedicating um, two days a week solid with the 49ers. So... Um, that schedule is just as hectic as being in the shop because you got another 40, 45 guys that you got to tend to outside of the barbershop yeah. every single week for 16 weeks, yeah. you know, for the last two years. And then not to count uh, preseason, OTA. So that's like basically about six months out of the year, you got a whole nother full-time job as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, I kind of want I wanted to talk about now, fast forward to where you're at now, or you moved from the East Coast, came to the Bay Area a few years back. And it seems like you've had overnight success here, man. Bro, but I know there was that whole journey that you just talked about before that. Talk about that transition from the East Coast coming to the Bay Area and so, what was going through your mind. So the East Coast or the South, um, coming, what, what was in my brain was, okay, um, like I said, I hit the ceiling. So it's like, all right, when I found out I was going to come here, I found out this is where I was going to build my foundation going forward. Mm. After that 10 years of me being in Florida, it's like, okay, um, anybody who has a job, you work at Walmart, mm. right? Say you're salary, you're a manager. Mm. They say, hey, we're going to move you to Dallas, Texas. We're going to pay you this much money. You're going to live here. We're going to relocate. We're going to pay for your housing. We're going to do this and this and that. Yeah, yeah. They got you. You're taken care of. Yeah. Me, it was the total opposite. I'm going to drop all my income, right? <laughs> Sell everything I got to have as much money as I can yeah. because I don't know when my next dollar is going to come. Yeah. I'm taking a major leap. Yeah. No set housing, no set salary. I knew where I was going to work. My car had to leave. So it was just like I just jumped up and came here. And when I came here, it was like, all right, um, I'm trying to be the first person to work. I'm trying to be the last person to leave. Yeah. Because you have, when, when you're a hard worker or when you know what it takes to be successful, you've got to sacrifice. Yeah. So any hanging out or any of that type of stuff when I got here was not necessary. Like, I was still on Florida time. Yeah. So I'm three hours ahead. Yeah. So I could come out here and actually, for these first couple of weeks, stay up late, still get up early enough to beat everybody to work. Yeah. So um, I had to kind of have that advantage. Now, culture-wise, it was totally different. Yeah. I'm in the area where it's mostly black. Yeah. Not saying I couldn't cut all types of hair, but the environment that I was in, it, it wasn't a whole ton of, of multicultural people coming yeah. in. So we had hardly no Asians. Yeah. And then you come to the Bay and you see the Asians are dominating. Like, you really, it's almost more Asians than anything. Here. Yeah. From the time I got out the, the plane in San Francisco, it was like, what the hell is going on, bro? Asian it's culture shock huh? everywhere. <laughs> culture shock, food, uh, the the type of um, housing, like in Florida, um, the 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 real estate or the the architecture is a lot different. Yeah. So just driving down the street and looking at the way the buildings are built and looking at the type of different shops or the things you see are just totally different than what I was used to. Yeah. So it was a major adjustment. But my main focus was income. Like, when I moved here, bro, I was in great shape. But the gym and all of that, none of that mattered to me because I was so hungry to, to not fail. Yeah. So I, I, I let all of that go out the window and, and just reshifted my energy and my focus yeah. to being successful. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to prove to myself, mm -hmm. prove to my parents, prove to a whole, a whole town of people. Where I'm from, everybody knows me. I know a lot of people. It's not a big area. It's not a big. So area. you got, you got, you got out of forty thousand people. Yeah. Right. In your little area, it might be five or six thousand people. Right. You know all these people. Yeah. You got twenty five hundred saying you gonna fail. 
You got 2,500 saying you're going to succeed. Yeah. But my whole thing was, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. Yeah. I got to make it. And it sounds like to come out here and take that, that leap, like you had some blind faith, man. And maybe you were just, you are confident in your skills. I right? knew three people, bro. That was Dave. Yeah. My uncle. And two, two cousins. So like five people. Yeah. That I really knew. I got other family from my uncle here, but mm -hmm. we never was that close. Yeah. So I had a solid, maybe a handful of people who I could just lean on. Yeah. I stayed with my uncle for a little bit. Uh, I was able to get out of his house in like four months. Now back home in Florida, um, rent is extremely cheap. Yeah. So for $1,000 a month, I had, I had the best setup you can get versus you coming here and you can't even rent a couch for a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> That's true, man. And the haircuts are a lot cheaper over there too, right? Haircuts, we were talking bro. about that earlier, bro. Spit some game on that, man. <laughs> so in Florida, uh, where I was at after being in the game for ten years, bro, you would get um, you would get haircuts for adults. Kids was ten bucks. Yeah. Adults were fifteen. Man. Face and beard. I mean, face and hair. Fifteen, 15 bucks. bucks. You had guys to slide you that 20 and be standing there. Waiting for the change. Waiting for the change. Like, oh, just give me back five. Bro, what do you mean? That's all you got coming anyway. So you, you're not doing no extra for me, but. Yeah, yeah. Man, I just got tired of that, bro. Not, not to say anything bad, but I knew I was worth more than that. Yeah. And I was just determined to figure out a way to do it. Yeah. So do you feel like, in a way, you were kind of capped at what your potential would be out there? Bro, capped. For, for. Three years, I was getting fifteen dollars. You know, if you like, I said again, I use Walmart because that's just a big, a big franchise. Yeah, yeah. You work at Walmart. Every year you get a raise. Five years you get uh, a plaque, or you probably get promoted, and you just keep going and going and going. You climb your way up. Yeah. But in barbering, you have to create that yourself. You have to uh, get your own raise, or you don't, you don't get that. Nothing's gonna be given to you unless you you demand it yeah so I was getting nothing over what I asked for yeah and I just got tired of that man that's that's a nice story man let's I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about you talked about earlier how you don't have to be the best barber necessarily but you got to know how to market yourself true so and you do a great job at marketing yourself man like it's like you're always posting on, you know social media you got your YouTube channel you guys are doing events a lifestyle event all those different things like maybe shed some light like to any barbers who are out there who are coming up like how important is it to brand yourself it's 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 like to me it is mandatory you have to create your brand mm -hmm. and you have to capitalize on that yeah um, I treat myself like say if I was a a, a, a designer label or, or a clothing brand. Yeah. Even Mark Echo, when he started Echo, um, you would see it everywhere. It, he marketed himself so much that it became on, uh, you would see it on the hot TV shows. Mm -hmm. You would see the artists wearing it. You would see everywhere you turn, you saw that rhino. Yeah. And then this, he just capitalized and built from there. So for me, I take my brand or my whole scenario yeah. the same way. Yeah. Um, every day you log on Instagram, you're going to see something that I'm doing. Yeah. Every day you get on Facebook, you're going to see that. Every day you get on Twitter. Any social media network, I'm posting something every day. Yeah. And as a new barber, you have to make people know you. Because at this point, when you're just starting, a lot of people aren't going to care who you are. They're not going to buy into you. Yeah. you got to earn that. Yeah. you got to put yourself out there. you got to go market. You have to network. you got to pay your dues, and you have to do paid advertising. You have to be at these barbering events. You have to, to be outside of the mall passing out your business card. You got to make yourself available and you have to make yourself relevant. Yeah. You have to make people want to experience whatever you have to offer. Yeah. Not just barbering, but that's anything you do. Yeah. And that's what I admire about you most, man, because when I come in, I see you have this entrepreneur spirit to you, man. It's like you're telling me, hey, I'm flying to the East Coast. I'm flying here. I'm going to be a presenter at a, at a show. And then you just came out with your own product too, right? Yes. Tell me about tell me about the the product. Okay, so um, the product is called um, the brand is titled Favorite Essentials. Mm -hmm. um, that's just something that the name I came up with because I believe that 
I'm favored mm -hmm. to be where I am today. You know, I'm favored by God, of course. Um, so I just wanted to title the the product company, mm -hmm. the product line, something after to kind of just glorify God. Yeah. Um, from there, um, I'm trying to build it slowly. Yeah. But I'm doing the same thing. Like if I'm starting over as a barber, yeah. all over again, uh, marketing, advertisement and just slamming it in everybody's face every single day. Yeah. Uh, I started with one product, which was like a mousse, kind of um, to lay down texture hair. Yeah. Um, a month later, I released a moisturizer, and I have like seven other items that I want to add to the line, but you know, it takes time and money. Yeah. So everything's strategic, and I'm just waiting and still making sure everything is quality before I put it out. Yeah. Um, and what inspired you to, to come out with the product? like? You're barbering, right? You're obviously, you know, doing well just in cutting hair, right? But like, what was going to your mind? Like, why, you know, why make a product? Like you talked about, yeah. saying that you seen that I had that entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. So, I always read. I read a lot, and um, there's so many people. Everybody's heard this. Oh, to be a millionaire, you have to have six streams of income. Yeah. Right. I don't know if that's per se true because I'm not a millionaire yet. But <laughs> not yet. I'm trying to add to my brand or my um, umbrella yeah and just to create multiple streams of income yeah so i'm i was getting to that point again where it's like okay um you, you're basically doing as much as you can in the shop now my pricing is is uh premium mm -hmm. of course now and uh every year i try to give myself a raise by you know um charging what i feel like i'm worth yeah but to add to that, I felt like I needed to create a product line, not only to make myself more relevant in the hair industry, but also just to create another stream of income. Yeah. So that was my main focus and my goal with that. I want to figure out how can I make money while I'm sleeping? Everybody wants to know how can you be uh, financially successful? Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out how do you get money when you're not working? Yeah. How can I legally make money when I'm not working yeah so now the goal for that is to go to sleep at night and wake up with it a few sales or you know mm -hmm. some items that i have to ship out and that's yeah. just income that's that's coming continuously yeah and from there i want to just create more products and build that up so yeah. i know i have a whole nother set a whole nother uh financial uh stability that i could just hold on to yeah yeah. And I think that's dope, man, because most people, when they're in like a business like you, they think only just one dimensional, right? They think like, oh, I'm just going to cut hair or I'm just going to do whatever my craft is. And there's and so many other branch offs that you can do that bring income in. So many. And that's good to have a one track mind. That's good. But that's only going to last so long. Yeah. So you got to do something. You got to think for long term. Yeah. Like, I don't want to just sell one house. Yeah. I want to sell multiple. Yeah. I want to figure out how can I put a team together and we all sell and we yeah. all eat. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing with hair. Yeah. I want to cut hair. I love hair. Yeah. Hair is like my true passion. Yeah. But I want to capitalize on every single thing that's hair related. Yeah. So people buy hair products. Let me do that. Yeah. People uh, buy and spend multi billions of dollars on ways to there's all types of schemes like, okay, you take this vitamin, your hair is going to grow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hey, you buy this special shampoo, yeah. uh, it's going to generate new hair follicles. Yeah. You know, some of this stuff works and some doesn't. Yeah. But people are spending billions of dollars on it. Yeah. Why can't, why can't I make something that actually works and something that I know is good and stand behind that and get some of that pie too? Yeah. Got to eat, man. Got to eat. Let's switch gears a little bit, man. Um, You've been cutting hair for the Niners recently. Yeah, man. man. Yeah, a couple of years now. That's awesome, man. Because when I when I get my hair cut, people say, "Who cut your hair?" I'm like, "Well, it's the same guy that cuts the Niners hair. <laughs> That's who cuts my hair." You know what I mean? So. Yeah, the, the you know the, the the premium the premium at uh, the premium what do you call that uh, lifestyle? Yeah. That's you know that's 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 just a part of what comes with my brand. Tell me about that, man. Like, how did how did you? Uh, what were the steps that led up to you cutting the Niners hair? Bruh, first it was availability. Yeah. Um, Dave has been a barber here and he's been living in San Jose for a while, a long yeah. time. 
Uh, I came here a couple months in. I've just been busting my ass, bro. Just going hard, trying to prove to not only myself or just to to everybody that I'm somebody you can count on. Yeah. So one day he says, "Hey, um, I've cut Pierre Garcon's hair. He's coming through later with some guys. If you stay, you help me cut him." I was like, "Sure." And uh, that was just a major alley. Yeah. He threw the alley, and, and when those guys came, I think it was like seven dudes. He actually only cut maybe two of them. Yeah. And uh, I ended up cutting majority of the rest. Yeah. And then from there, it was like those guys, some of them made the team, some of them didn't. Yeah. A couple that made the team came back, and they brought other dudes. And then they brought other dudes. And then they was like, okay, well, uh, this guy, T, he's solid. Um He's a great barber. Now we need him to be convenient for us. Yeah. So they went and pulled some strings, I guess, with the main office or whatever, and got me to be able to come to the facility, to the locker room and cut there. And once I got inside the locker room, bro, it's everybody's, everybody has to take, well, they don't have to, but everybody's showering after practice. Yeah. There's a whole barbershop set up inside the locker room. Yeah. You gotta pass through the restroom, the shower, it's yeah. in the cut. Yeah. But everybody sees it. Yeah. So when I get there, it's like for my first time, I got called for one person. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm gonna make this dude hair look so good. <laughs> Somebody else is gonna walk past him and be yeah, like, yeah. I need that. Yeah, yeah. And uh it, it happened to be Marquis Goodwin. Oh he's man. a major player on the team. Yeah, so he's he walking by, he's like, damn, bro, I see you doing your thing. Like, uh, how much you charge? And at this point, I'm like, I'm kind of timid. Like, man, I don't want to say, you know, what it is, but I know he don't he don't care anyway. Yeah, this yeah, guy yeah. got millions. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm charging one fifty. He's like, yeah. all right, cool, cut me next. I'm like, all right. So I cut him. <laughs> yeah. Bro, and that day I cut him and one other person. So I went to show up to cut one person. Yeah. End up doing three. By the time I got back to work that Tuesday, I had messages from multiple players, like, hey. Uh, how, hey, can you cut me? What's your availability? And then I just took that and just ran with it. I started marketing those two or three guys. Yeah. Posting them on Instagram. I saw that. Posting them on my story. Posting them on Facebook. Hey, look, I cut this person. Hey, look, watch this. And it just grew from there. From there, it's like now it's I'm doing that every single week. Man. Every single week. Some days, 10, 15 guys. I'm doing house calls. I'm pulling up to all these mansions for multiple. How dope does that feel, man? Right. I seen you pulling up to like a mansion in like Atherton or something. Bro, it's, it's an amazing feeling because, like I said, bro, this is something that I never wanted. <laughs> and to see myself apply myself and just just come out the way I have, yeah. You know, there's millions of barbers who would do what I do for free. Yeah. There's millions of barbers in this in in this world who would say, "Hey, I'll go cut D Force hair for free." Yeah. Hey, I'll go cut. Marquis Goodwin for free. Yeah. Hey, I will go cut Corn Alexander for free. Yeah. But, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a position to where they want to pay me for my services. Yeah. These guys get free clothes. They get free shoes. They get free massages. They get free cars. Yeah, yeah. I was cutting Debo Samuel uh, a couple of days ago, and, um, you know, we was talking about, hey, he got a stack of Beats headphones in, in, in his living room. The whole world's paying 300 350 for these headphones. Yeah. He had a stack of them. I'm like, damn, bro. He was just, he's like, hey, uh, you like them? I'm like, yeah, he said, take what you want. Bro, I get it free. Woo. He gets paid to, 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 to wear this stuff that we, yeah, yeah. That, that we all can't even afford to buy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those are just the perks of the business, bro. Perks, bro. <laughs> so not only now, you know, I've, bro, you see me wearing Adidas a lot. I get yeah. tons of free Adidas stuff. Yeah. You know, the stuff with, but these guys are blessing me with, and just making my umbrella larger and larger and yeah. larger. And it's just all a part of working hard and, and, you know, like I said, making yourself available. Yeah. If you if you have the availability, that's major. Yeah. Um, I've been as early as 5 o'clock in the morning to the locker room. Yeah. Okay, I got a guy who's going to pay me five, $600 for a haircut. Yeah. So I'm going to be there. And then after that, I'm going to get another one or two before the team travels. Yeah. But if I don't make myself available, I don't get these type of opportunities. Yeah. So you saying you going from making fifteen dollars a haircut to five, six hundred dollars a haircut? Man, 
I did the national championship last year. Yeah. Uh, I was fortunate enough to hire, I hired 10 barbers to go with me. Wow. Paid every one of them. Five barbers went to um, Clemson Hotel. Five went to Alabama. Wow. And the NCAA made, wrote me a check to, to pay these guys and pay myself. Yeah. And I just remember when I was getting these eight bucks, I was getting these 10 bucks. So now you're getting thousand dollar checks, couple few thousands of dollars of checks. I'm not yeah. gonna say how much, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know, and just like, man, like it's all a surprise to me too still. What man. an awesome feeling, man. Cause to, to to hear from you coming up, growing up in your parents' shop, man, you're like, I ain't trying to be a barber. Right? They want nothing to do with it. So now having the amount of success you're having, man, and it, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, tip man. Tip of the iceberg, you're bro. Still young. Still young, you know. still growing. Um, I know that um, eventually I'm gonna outgrow where I am. Yeah. Um, we have incidents now where it be uh, athletes coming to shop, and you know you have the other clients freaking out and going crazy. And, yeah. You know it's just it's just to the point now where it's like okay how how long am I gonna be able to be where I'm at? Yeah. So uh, I don't know that, but. Um, and, and and being available. Also, you're talking about juggling another 40, 50 some guys. Yeah. So what I I got my cousin here now. Yeah. And my goal with him is to get him up to speed so he can help me, yeah. you know, uh take on some of the responsibilities that I have. Yeah. And and put him on the right track and then he can eat. And then we can just keep growing the umbrella from there. Yeah. I love that, man, because you have this go big or go home attitude, man. Oh, that's the only way, bro. Right? <laughs> So I just I think we should wrap it up, man. I mean, we could talk for days about this whole barber game, but um, I just want to commend you, man. Just seeing your hustle and it's, it inspires me, man. Because me being an entrepreneur and coming in and seeing you doing all these things, it just it, it lights a fire under me. Like, man, I, I got to step my game up or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I so appreciate and you, just bro. to see, you know, what you're doing, I think you can be a huge inspiration to other barbers coming up. Because a lot of people, if you're outside of the barber world, you don't know what's possible in here, right, man. It's so much in the, in the in the barbering industry, bro. There's so many avenues. Yeah. Um, I have sponsors, like major sponsors, um, and this clipper company. Yeah. It's like the best. I grew up using the clippers. Yeah. I never knew that it was possible to have them, you know, pay you or send you their items to market for them or yeah. to use their clippers. I was already using them anyway. Yeah. But I became... Um, I became known enough or I became popular enough or, or, or relevant enough yeah. for them to say, hey, we want we want to endorse you. Yeah. You know, uh, watch watch companies. Uh, Joy Watches is another I give, you know, Joy Watches sends me their products every so often, you know, for, for me to wear, for other people to see to market. You yeah. know, um, hair products. There are other, before I started my own product company, I actually had to wait till I ran out of uh, contract expired with a couple of different product lines yeah. before I actually started my own. So, um, you know, man, it, it, it's it's multiple ways in the hair industry as as a barber to to generate revenue, income, and yeah. different type of um, avenues. Yeah, yeah. So to be sponsored by um, major brands is like it's something that. That a lot of people don't know it's possible. Yeah. But um, you see it in these trade shows, and when you're at these trade shows, and I'm hosting workshops, or I'm teaching different hair techniques to different people for um, different companies, that that's still amazing to me. Yeah. Because I was the student who used to hit the hair shows, and see these guys on stage, and see these guys, you know, uh, marketing a product, and be like, how can I do that? I didn't even know where to start. Yeah. But. Having mentors and having people that you can uh, reach to who know more than you about certain things really helps too. Yeah. Um, I met Dave at a hair show. Um, and that's what Dave was teaching the workshop. He was teaching the class. And um, he gave me a lot of game about the hair industry. Yeah. He's been and a big blessing to you, man. Major blessing to me. Um, and, and, and I've learned so much from him. Dave's like a... He's a vet. He's a barber, a barber yeah. vet. Dave and he's was, the owner of Barber's Inc. For yeah. those of you guys that don't know. Dave owns the shop that I work at. Yeah. 
Dave gave me the blessing and told me, come here, I'm, I'm going to make sure you eat. That's how I met you. Yep. I was supposed to get cut by Dave and he was busy <laughs> and he didn't want me to go. I came in, he's like, don't worry, this guy will cut your hair. He cuts really good. He's a master barber. Yeah. See, availability. I sat down. We just talked about it. We've been that. rocking for like two years now, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're going strong, man. <laughs> and, and it just, it builds from there. So he's been a, a major mentor to me. Yeah. Helped me, you know, um, and push me and say, he told me, I told him how much I was getting. Yeah. Bro, you getting 15 bucks. <laughs> bro, come, come, come to the bay. We getting 40. <laughs> this was, this was two years ago. Yeah. So in two years, I've created a, a $20 raise. Yeah. I went from 40 to 60 in two years. Yeah, man. So. So I guess to wrap it up, I got one last question for you. So if you can go back to when you were like a kid or a teenager, <laughs> If you had to tell yourself one thing, I would tell what would myself, you tell yourself, bro? I would tell myself, um, I would tell myself if I could go back, don't try to run from fate. You're already destined to be something. Just do it, start now. Yeah. If I'd have had those extra four years, if I'd have went to, because they have a program back home where you can go to tech school and, and um, the school board pays for it. Yeah. So I could have went to barber school for free when I was, 17, 16, but I didn't do it. I would have did that and already been way ahead of the game. Who knows how much further I would be alone now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I'd have had that extra four years ahead of me, yeah. instead of just wasting my time and just hanging out, all my friends were, all my friends were just getting by. Yeah. So I've noticed my circle go from a group of four or five guys as it's skating through life just barely getting by to now in a circle of Everyone's successful. Yeah. Everybody who I'm around is like successful and even more successful than me. So that gives me that extra drive and push. Yeah. So I would have surrounded myself with more success. Yeah. But I was hanging around guys who weren't doing any better than me to make myself feel good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you couldn't really level up. Couldn't level up. Yeah. I was already leveled up. Okay. And, and basically then my parents were still taking care of me. I used to spend nights and spend time with all these friends who had nothing going on, bro. Yeah. They was just skating by like me. And it made me feel comfortable like that was okay. Yeah, man. Well, I think we nailed it, man. I appreciate you coming out. Where can people find you at? Find me on Instagram first at T-E-E underscore D-A Barber. Find me on YouTube at T the Barber. Find me on everything at T the Barber. Alright. <laughs> As you continue to blow up, man, still I make some time for my haircuts, alright? Let's do it, baby. Yeah. Okay.